CompTIA Pen Test Plus PT0003 exam practice questions with explanations are available in the video for you to study. Which of the following activities should be performed to prevent uploaded web shells from being exploited by others? A. Remove the persistence mechanisms. B. Spin down the infrastructure. C. Preserve artifacts. D. Perform secure data destruction. The answer is D. Secure data destruction. Securely deleting the web shell ensures it cannot be accessed or exploited by attackers in the future. This involves removing the malicious file and overriding the space it occupied to prevent recovery. Why not other options? A. Uh, remove persistence mechanisms. While helpful in maintaining security, this doesn't address the immediate threat of the web shell. B. Spin down infrastructure. This could disrupt operations and doesn't directly mitigate the web shell issue. C. Preserve artifacts. While necessary for forensic analysis, it does not prevent further exploitation of the web shell. During a red team exercise, a penetration tester obtains an employee's access badge. The tester uses the badge's information to create a duplicate for unauthorized entry. Which of the following best describes this action? A. Smurfing B. Credential stuffing C. RFID cloning D. Card skimming The answer is C. RFID cloning RFID, radio frequency identification Cloning involves copying the data from an access badge and creating a duplicate that can be used for unauthorized entry. Tools like Proxmark or RFID duplicators are commonly used for this purpose. Why not other options? A. Smurfing, a network-based denial-of-service attack, unrelated to physical access. B. Credential stuffing involves using stolen credentials in bulk for authentication attempts, unrelated to badge cloning. D. Card skimming relates to stealing credit card information, not access badges. A penetration tester needs to scan a remote infrastructure with Nmap. The tester issues the following command nmap 10.10.1.0 slash 24 which of the following is the number of tcp ports that will be scanned a 256 b 1000 c 1024 d 65535 the answer is b Default behavior of Nmap scans. By default, Nmap scans the 1000 most common TCP ports when no specific port range is defined. The command Nmap 10.10.1.0 slash 24 initiates a scan of 256 IPs in the subnet but still limits the port scan to the default of 1000 TCP ports for each IP. Why not other options? A. 256. This relates to the number of IP addresses in the 24 subnet, not the number of ports scanned. C. 1024. This would only apply if explicitly specified in the command. D. 65535. Scanning all ports requires the P option, which is not used here. 
A penetration tester cannot complete a full vulnerability scan because the client's WAF is blocking communications. During which of the following activities should the penetration tester discuss this issue with the client? A. Goal reprioritization. B. Peer review. C. Client acceptance. D. Stakeholder alignment. The answer is D. Stakeholder alignment. During stakeholder alignment, the penetration tester and client discuss challenges, constraints, and objectives. Addressing WAF interference ensures the scope and goals are adjusted or mitigated to accommodate the issue. Why not other options? A. Goal reprioritization focuses on internal team adjustments, not client collaboration. B. Peer review evaluates findings and methodologies but doesn't involve clients. C. Client acceptance occurs post-assessment, not during active engagement. A penetration tester finished a security scan and uncovered numerous vulnerabilities on several hosts. Based on the target's EPSS and CVSS scores, which of the following targets is the most likely to get attacked? A. Target 1. EPSS score equals 0.6 and CVSS score equals 4. B. Target 2. EPSS score equals 0.3 and CVSS score equals 2. C. Target 3. EPSS score equals 0.6 and CVSS score equals 1. D. Target 4. EPSS score equals 0.4 and CVSS score equals 4.5. The answer is a EPSS and CVSS analysis. EPSS, Exploit Prediction Scoring System, indicates the likelihood of exploitation. CVSS, Common Vulnerability Scoring System represents the severity of the vulnerability. Rationale Target 1 has the highest EPSS score, 0.6, combined with a moderately high CVSS score, 4, making it the most likely to be attacked. Other options either have lower EPSS or CVSS scores reducing their likelihood of being exploited. During a penetration testing exercise, a team decides to use a watering hole strategy. Which of the following is the most effective approach for executing this attack? A. Compromise a website frequently visited by the organization's employees. B. Launch a DDoS attack on the organization's website. C. Create fake social media profiles to befriend employees. D. Send phishing emails to the organization's employees. The answer is a watering hole attack explanation. A watering hole attack involves compromising a website that the target frequently visits. The attacker injects malicious code into the site, which then exploits users who access it. Why not other options? B. DDoS attacks disrupt services but do not align with the watering hole strategy. C. Social engineering may be effective but is not a watering hole attack. D. Phishing is unrelated to compromising trusted websites. Which of the following techniques is the best way to avoid detection by data loss prevention tools? A. Encoding B. Compression 
C. Encryption D. Obfuscation The answer is A. Encoding to evade DLP Encoding, e.g., Base64, transforms data into a format that may bypass data loss prevention DLP, tools. DLP solutions often look for specific patterns, e.g., sensitive keywords, file headers, and may not recognize encoded data. Why not other options? B. Compression. Compression reduces file size but does not typically bypass DLP detection mechanisms. C. Encryption. Encrypted data is detectable by DLP tools, though its contents may not be readable. D. Obfuscation. While obfuscation hides intent, encoding is more effective for bypassing automated detection. During a pre-engagement activity with a new customer, a penetration tester looks for assets to test. Which of the following is an example of a target that can be used for testing? A API B HTTP C I P A D I C M P The answer is A API is a target. APIs, Application Programming Interfaces, are common assets to test for vulnerabilities such as improper authentication, data leakage, or injection attacks. Testing APIs often uncovers critical issues in modern applications. Why not other options? B. HTTP this is a protocol, not a specific asset. C. IPA. Unrelated to penetration testing. Likely a typo or irrelevant here. D. ICMP. This is a protocol used for network diagnostics, not an application asset. Which of the following explains the reason a tester would opt to use DREAD over PTES during the planning phase of a penetration test? A. The tester is conducting a web application test. B. The tester is assessing a mobile application. C. The tester is evaluating a thick client application. D. The tester is creating a threat model. The answer is D. Dread for threat modeling. Dread is a risk assessment framework used in threat modeling to prioritize vulnerabilities based on their impact, reproducibility, exploitability, affected users, and discoverability. It is specifically designed for creating and analyzing threat models. Why not other options? A, B, C. While dread can be applied in various contexts, web, mobile, thick client applications, its primary purpose is threat modeling, not specific testing methodologies like PTES. During host discovery, a security analyst wants to obtain GOIP information and a comprehensive summary of exposed services. Which of the following tools is best for this task? A. Weigel.net B. WHOIS C. The Harvester D. Census.io the answer is D. Census.io Census.io is a search engine for Internet-connected devices. It provides information about IP addresses, domains, GeoIP data, and exposed services. Why not other options? A. Weigel.net focuses on mapping Wi-Fi networks 
not providing detailed information about IP addresses or services. B. WHOIS provides domain registration and ownership details but lacks GOIP and service summaries. C. The Harvester primarily gathers OSINT like email addresses, subdomains, and names but not service information or GOIP data.